TheCreativeFilmEvents.com, and we are here tonight at the beautiful TCL Chinese Theater in Hollywood, California. We are here at the 26th Annual Dances with Films Festival, supporting independent artists and filmmakers. And uh, just because the festival is called Dances with Films, it doesn't necessarily have to be a movie about dance. Tonight, we are uh, covering the premiere of the documentary feature, The Mad Writer. Looking forward to speaking with the cast and crew about the project. So, uh, tell us, how did you uh, get involved in this production, and how do you even find out about Austin? Well, uh, one, uh, I've been a collaborator with Zach for many, many years. We actually met at like a film summer camp. He was my editing TA, and uh, we ended up going to the same film school and uh, moving out here. We, uh, you know, we used to work at Union, and we, he asked me to. He told me he had an idea for a doc, and he needed a director to kind of help show him the ropes of how to direct, and brought me on as a producer. And uh, as far as Austin, I've been a fan of Larange for years. We're actually both from North Carolina, like not too far from each other, and. Uh, my first music video as a director out here in LA was for one of his songs and uh, yeah like I, I've always just been such a huge fan. Uh, what was the music video? What was the song? It was his collaboration with Cool Keith and it was The Wanderer where a guy's like in a suit and he's like walking around LA and it's uh, very very crazy but it was a fun time. Oh sounds cool I'm gonna check that out I love I love music videos so um, how did the film evolve you know when you found out about Austin's uh, issue and the you know, hearing issues and all that and it was it was it organic? Did you have to make any special accommodations for him? Um, not so much special accommodations. It's more just being, you know, having a bit of care around not making it exploitative, you know, because we're, we, you know, we care about him and he's our close friend. So it's, you know, originally we started out just wanting to make like a music doc, you know, just about his music because his music's so amazing. But as it's going, Zach's asking him questions and he starts telling him about his ear bleeding, you know, and it's like, what? And, you know, that kind of finds its way into the doc. Yeah. So it ended up becoming something different from what you originally anticipated. Absolutely. So yeah, how did, how did the, how do you think the final product turned out? Like it became a totally different movie. Was that surprising to you? For sure. It was definitely really surprising how it turned out because one thing I didn't really think about was uh, Zach and Austin's relationship as friends. They butt heads through the whole movie. Oh, wow. And it's just, you know, it's very interesting making a documentary about someone who does not care anything about the documentary, doesn't want to answer questions. He only really cares about his music. And that's what we, you know, really love about him. That, that's actually probably better because, you know, it's more natural and you're just having, he's just kind of there doing his thing and then you're there just capturing it. It's very, you know, right? Very natural. Right. And we, we get to see Zach be tortured and try to make this movie and yeah. Austin just not giving it to him at all. Oh, yeah. you know? That sounds pretty awesome. Uh, well, I'm looking forward to seeing it. I'll try to make it tonight. Uh, would you have anything else you want to plug? What's coming up next for you? What are you working on next? Uh, I literally just wrapped another music video for a buddy Marvin um, and yeah just writing short films and just gonna be keep directing okay. And uh, when can we see the music video? Well, that's, that's a great question. I just rapped last night, so <laughs> I don't know. I'm about to go to Montreal, so maybe maybe uh, in, a, in a month or so. All right. Yeah. I'll be looking for it. Uh, do you want to give us your social media so we can stay in touch? Yeah, yeah, sure. It's just JohnWeb23 uh, on Instagram. That's pretty much all I use, really. <laughs> it's just Instagram. All right. Keep it simple. One-stop shop. All right. Well, I think we're good. Thank you for speaking with us tonight, John, and enjoy the rest of the evening. Thank you. Thanks. Nice to, uh, tell us, how'd you get involved? involved in the, the production and the film? So uh, I knew the subject. I've known him since I was 13 years old and I've just kind of always thought he would be a very unique documentary subject. He's just an odd duck with a very strange personality. He's kind of like a hip hop Larry David, a bit of a curmudgeon. But then about a month into shooting him, he calls me and tells me that he's got these tumors and he started bleeding from the ear. And it sort of just took on a whole different storyline and we went down a totally different direction than we thought we would with the film. So, How much convincing did it take uh, take him to, to do the production, to do the project? So we pitched him for about a year before he finally even let us start shooting, and we pitched him so many versions of this, and the one that he finally allowed us to start working on, it was like a meta, it involved us like making the film at all about him. He wanted to like uh, have that be an element in the film, but oh my gosh, it took a solid year, and even then, as you'll see in the film, he was, there was never a moment where he was 
was thrilled to let us shoot him. Yeah, I had I had heard that uh, he was uh, did, could care less. So was that difficult? Did you have to make some special accommodations for him or shoot in a particular way? No special accommodations, but uh, you just be patient with him. And sort of in the end, we just decided we were going to lean into that. So the more fighting he, the more bickering he gave us, it ended up being better. You know, it was like if he felt, I don't want to say uncomfortable, but the more out of his comfort zone he got, it seemed to, the better the footage seemed to be. So it was like. Well, is there any other fun behind the scenes uh, stories or secrets from the set you want to tell us? Behind the scenes <laughs> stories. There's got to be some. I, off the top of my head, I don't know that I can think of one. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, well, we we all had fun. We just did slam dance earlier today or earlier this year, and we had a blast going out into the snow together. And there's lots of crazy stories there, but none that I'm I'm just blanking under the hot lights. I apologize, but pressure's on, Zach. Pressure's on. That's okay. Uh, well, so what do you what do you what message or impact do you hope that this film has going forward with the you know community hearing impaired and all that? Yeah, I mean, like he's he's really he he cares a lot about the hearing impaired community and about mental health. The film really touches on his depression. But in general, like what drew me to it was his personality. I really wanted to like put him and his personality into a film, like just if I could if I could uh, paint a portrait of him on a plate, I thought it would be worth it. And really, to me, it's like he doesn't care what anybody thinks of him at all. And I care on maybe too much. So it feels to me like uh, uh, something people can take something from. And how he chooses to live his life, I think we can all take a little bit from that. So I hope I hope you take that. Thank you. Well, well said, Zach. Uh, anything else you want to plug, uh, or what's up coming? What's coming up next for you? I'm uh, working on a true crime film for Netflix right now. I'm really excited about. Uh, but I'm a film editor, so I'm back to cutting. Uh, this is the last time I'll direct for a while, I think. But I really enjoyed the experience. Right. And uh, can we also get your social media so we can keep in touch? I'm Zach Kashket on Instagram, or the film is uh, The Mad Writer Film uh, at Instagram. Right. Well, congratulations, and thanks for uh, speaking with us tonight. Yeah, All right, nice to meet you. Thank you. And so tell us how you got involved with the project. I work with um, Zach Kashket, who's our director uh, at a company called Union Editorial. And this is a little passion project of his. He wanted to work on on the side. He uh, is an editor by trade and I'm a producer by trade, so he asked if I would help out on it and the company is also uh, executive producing it, so um, it's been our little labor of love for several years now, I'm finally out in the world. Yeah, that's cool, and so uh, tell me how the film evolved, because I know it's, it started as one thing and totally evolved and changed when uh, you found out about uh, Austin's you know, issue and medical issue. Zach um, met Austin at a band camp. They were both there. He was there to study uh, editing and Austin was there to do music and they've stayed friends since middle school and he always thought Austin was an interesting character and so he always thought like if I ever get the chance he'd be a cool person to do it on and um, so when they started shooting Zach's entire purpose was he wanted to get out of editing commercials and into doing long form and he thought maybe if I do one on my own they'll let me and of course it took so long through the pandemic and everything that now he already is editing uh, long form documentaries and so it just became a fun thing but part way through uh, Austin the movie was supposed to just be about him as a musician and producer and he ended up getting a, a really crazy tumor in his ear that was life-threatening and he ended up finding love and getting married and so the whole movie became an entirely different thing over the course of the last like two years. It ended up kind of having its own Hollywood ending if you will. That's cool and um, so what was the shoot like? Were you on set most of the time or how did that go? I kind of came into the project after most of the filming was done. I was around for the last little bits of filming but they filmed uh, in Nashville quite a bit where they lived and North Carolina when Went on tour to Europe with them and I came in so for the Seattle portion of the shoots and just the, the last little interviews um, and then I've been kind of largely taken over all of the fun boring stuff at the end where you have to get all the permissions and clearances and do all the finishing yeah yeah uh, any other fun behind the scenes uh, experiences you want to share well Austin is a, quite a curmudgeon especially for a guy in his 30s he was very skeptical the entire process and he's got a very dry sarcastic sense of humor but I really think even though he trusted his friend he was like this is never going anywhere and especially as the years elapsed and so it was really fun to get to show him the movie for the first time because I literally saw him start
start sitting up straighter in his seat as the you know as the movie played. And then by the end, he was just like, you know, oh, this is a movie about me. <laughs> and how was his reaction? Did he was he pleased with the final outcome? Yeah, he really likes it. He's really happy with it. I think it's hard for anybody to watch something about themselves, but I think he really trusted his friend and yeah. and and really likes the outcome. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, cool. Thanks for speaking with us. Can we uh, get your social media so we can keep in touch yeah. if you, if you want to share it? Yeah, sure. So our company's social media is at Union Editorial on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter, uh, and mine is Kayla Cool, and I'm also on all three of those platforms. Yeah. Okay. All right. Thank you. Well, thanks for speaking with us. Have a great night, Catherine. Thanks. Hi, it's Katie Jacques again with MajorFilmEvents.com. We're signing off at this year's 26th annual Dances with Films Festival. We just saw the documentary feature, The Mad Writer. It's a beautiful, touching film, you guys. We had a great time talking to the cast on the red carpet here at the beautiful Chinese Theater in Hollywood, California. And uh, we're going to go upstairs and have a drink at the VIP lounge. So uh, keep watching because you never know where we'll be next. <laughs>